Welcome back. At the end of the previous part, we arrived here in the real Anapausis. As part of Marianne's story. We need to find the voice we heard. Ah. Here you are. Hello. Hide and seek, hide and seek. Where did Mary and her friends go? To a great sea without borders. To the place from which all lives flow. Hey there. Ah, the blue eyes there. Oh, hi. I'm sorry. I was just preparing some tea and didn't notice you. Come, sit. Snacks will be ready soon. Oh, some lovely tea. Oh, there's cake as well. Oh, snacks. Yes, and ours are very good. Ah, but I must say this first. We can only start once the bell rings. It would be quite rude to do otherwise. Where are you from, by the way? Why, you are a fascinating combination, aren't you? A handsome young man, a small little oceanid, and your beautiful floating friend. <laughs> Pyman's Pyman, and he's Twitika. Triple dot. Huh? See, just Pyman or does Anne look unhappy? She might have been reminded of something. Ah, and this oceanid is our friend, Anne. Oh my, a fine name indeed. In that case, please call me Marianne. Marianne, yeah, yeah, those triple dots there. Uh, you know, I'm unsure we've heard this name before. We have, Paimon, we have. My, what a pleasant surprise. It's been a long time since I've met someone from outside. Where are you from? Uh, well, we're, uh... Actually, Paimon's not sure either. We defeated the fell dragon Narcius, and then we ended up here somehow. Fell dragon Narcius, you say? That must have been a frightening foe. Uh, do you think so, Twitika? Uh, in a manner of speaking, I suppose. My, I've heard that Narcius has hurt many, and has turned many kingdoms to ash. Defeating him was an impressive feat indeed. Oh, so you know about him too? Great. We're from the kingdom, and we're looking for Princess Lyris. Uh, do you know where we might find her? Princess Lyris, you say? I'm afraid I do not know. But she should be here. Is that the case, Anne? But I have lived here for a long, long time, and yet I have never seen any princess. Perhaps she might be someone else. Is that so? But before we came here, we read a book about that princess and how she's beautiful and kind and stuff. And stuff. I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with any such person. On the flip side, you, Twitka, do... Quite look like a prince from a distant land. Oh, do I? Oh, a troubled dot. Hmm. You hear the sound of a bell. Okay. Huh? Is that the bell? Yes, that's the signal for tea time. Oh, it's a lovely bell. I knew I liked it. In the past, the children would throw down their wooden swords the moment they heard this bell. And they would come into the hall to have snacks. So it's the lunch bell. They're not here now. I think it's best to follow the rules all the same. They'd be quite disappointed otherwise, I suspect. Well then, shall we? Don't mind if I do. Hooray! Snacks! You and Pyman enjoy the snacks together. They look very beautiful, but they are tasteless like pure water. Because they're made of water. How were they? Lie, Pyman. Well, they were great, although Pyman couldn't really taste them. Are you on a sh low sugar diet or something, Marianne? Hmm, my apologies, Paimon. I just made them as I remember them, so I'm not sure if they taste all that good. Oh, don't worry about it. At, at least Paimon's full now. Well, in that case, let me take you all out on a stroll. Stroll to where? Okay. A lovely house you have here. Is that made of water as well? Where are we going? You're not saying anything. Usually in a stroll people say things. Lovely weather we've got today. That sort of thing. Oh! My. This is a flower garden that we've painstakingly taken care of. Lovely, isn't it? It's alright. 
I've heard Basil say that caring for children is like caring for a flower. You need good soil, sufficient sunlight, frequent watering, and you can't let them grow however you want. <laughs> Sounds like this Basil is pretty smart. In fact, you must get rid of pests from time to time as well. Oh, uh, battle incoming. Uh, actually, Basil sounds pretty dangerous too. Ah, uh, she is very capable indeed. Making snacks, caring for flowers. She can do it all. It would be nice if I could introduce her to you. I have been caring for the flowers here all this time in the hopes that some friends might come and I might show them how they have bloomed. And well, here you are. Well, it's a shame that they aren't in bloom right now, though. Well, we just need to water them, and they'll be fine. Hide and seek, hide and seek, where did Mary and her friends go? To the halls of seaborne foam to watch the sunflowers in bloom. Okay. As the drops of water stain the soil of the garden black, the sunflowers spring from the earth, growing quickly in bloom. Oh my, aren't they beautiful? Huh? That was quick. Oh, they've been waiting for friends to arrive. After all. And with your arrival, ah, they were so excited. All they needed then was a little encouragement, a little rain to get them going. Ah, so that's how it is. Nature really is amazing. Hmm. So I really want to speak to Arn about this. Like, what's going on in your mind right now with... These revelations as they come. Uh, nature really is amazing. Do you like the man? Yeah. They're very beautiful, like gleaming gold. I knew you would. I love them too, after all. You're from a very, very far away place, aren't you, Twitka? Yeah, not even in this dimension. What sort of flowers bloom there? Well, yeah, describe the flowers your sister wears in her hair. Ah, those do sound like lovely flowers. What option do you get if, um... And you chose the uh, female main character. Like, do you just mention the flowers in your hair? Is that, is that the other option? Uh, but I fear that they'll be hard to find now. Twitika. Oh. Then let us speak of other flowers. I've always been in Fontaine. And I've never gone elsewhere. That said, a friend of mine has been to Sumeru. Heard from him that there are many flowers there that can't be found here. Those that grow on cliffs. Ones that are only open at night. Some even grow on cacti. <laughs> and that's when he realised that there were no cacti in Fontaine. And had to give me a separate explanation. He was always the serious sort. And he was the smartest of us when we were young. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm talking to myself. It must be a little too exciting for me. Meeting new friends like this. Well then, Paimon. Have you seen any special flowers? Um, Monster... Dandelions come to mind? Dandelions? Oh, do you have any of their delightful seeds with you? Uh, well, we might. Dandelions, dandelions, bloom, bloom, bloom. Dandelion seeds can indeed be found on Paimon, apparently. Marianne happily plants them in the soil. Ah, yes. What sort of flower is a dandelion? Uh, Paimon thought you knew. Well, um, how should we put this? The dandelion flower is made of many tiny white flowers, and these white flowers have seeds on them. When the wind blooms, these tiny flowers will scatter along with the wind, and they will take root and sprout elsewhere, eventually making new flowers. Cool, huh? Well, they really are. Didn't know such a flower existed, but I have heard about something similar. Oh, what sort of flower is that? It's not a flower, but a story about water. In a certain place, there was a peaceful body of water. Later, with disturbance, there came ripples, and droplets appeared in those ripples. Droplets that had life in them. This life left the water and turned into different forms. But though they were all made of water, gulfs opened between them due to these differences. Each drop of life was very weak, but each was beautiful in its own way. Yeah, sounds familiar. The dandelions you spoke of, Paimon, reminded me a lot of that story. A flower that was once united, as one would be separated would bloom and each piece would become itself. But a single drop of water is weak and will dry up easily. Together they will be strong, and yet they will no longer be themselves. Is that how it is with dandelions too? You think that's a good thing? Uh, Paimon doesn't really get it. What do you think, Twitika? Hmm, 
People can unite and yet maintain their personhood. Hmm, can they really? I can understand where you're coming from, Twitka. What you're talking about sounds like what happened to Al, Petit Chow, and the others. To help us, they melted into one, turning into that big bubble. Indeed. Yes, I still remember. Well, it might be meaningless to say this now. Let's have a little walk again, shall we? Ah, yes. I can take you to see our dog. Your dog? Does it have a name? You've got a dog, Marianne. Yes, he's a silly dog who always... Accompanied me. Mm hmm. What's his name? Yep. Where is the doggy? I hear him. At least I think, or it was you falling asleep. Could have been that. Hmm, Pyman doesn't see him though. Hmm. Feed the dog. With what? There we are. Doggy. Noble sir, it is an honor to receive food from you. A pleasure to see you again as well, Miss Marianne. Eh? Oh, you good doggy. A good doggy. And how do you do, dear little miss? Well, um, thanks for being polite and all, but... Um, and what's going on? I don't know, but this can't be Maury. He has always kept me company. Hmm, does this mean that we've been wrong all along about what dogs really look like? Don't fuss over the details too much, Pyman. Just go along with it for now. Water can take any shape, and life can choose what form it must take. This, however, has nothing to do with its essence. That is a different matter. Uh, didn't Al say something similar? I have heard something similar said. But the body is a prison that restricts evolution. That person was once a child like all the others. We and many others heard him tell many stories about how all life was originally formless, like water, and how there were no barriers between souls, thus allowing them to compose an endless story. You could do this quest, couldn't you? I mean, I assume so, because I picked it up beforehand. Before, like, you complete the Archon quest for Fontaine? So knowing what we know about the Archon quest, this actually has very different sort of, um, not ramifications, what's the right word? It's like different insights into what's going on, like what the story could be. Because this almost sort of like spoils what's going to happen in the Archon quest, in a way. Almost, if you did it in that order. Hmm. Many have forsaken their bodies, for if water can be withdrawn from blood, so too can will be drawn out from one's form. But if you were to try to sprinkle water on the blackened dust that remains, it will not become blood again. And I, I remember something, even though I really don't want to. Why? How much do you remember, Anne? I don't know. There's just this flood of feelings and scenes, happy words and angry ones. I I'm not sure. I understand. You go first, alright? And remember, be a good dog. Understood. See you, Miss Marianne. See you, dear guests. Bye? Oh, this is bad. The number of things that don't make sense just keeps going up. If we hadn't seen the dog, Pyman would have forgotten all that stuff already. Didn't we say we were going to rescue Princess Lyris? That's right. My apologies, but there is no princess here. She is in another castle. What? Only us. Today, we were simply fortunate to receive guests. This is the end of the path. She has to be here. But Marianne said... Um, so that's got to mean that one of you is mistaken, right? Right, Twitka? Hmm, do you really want to hear what I have to say? Of course, you've got the bigger brain here, don't you? Paimon, all we experienced so far was just a story. Wait, but, but, but didn't we team up with, with the adventure team uh, to defeat Narcissus' henchmen? Wasn't that real? Think about it for a moment, Paimon. Is there even a kingdom amongst the seven nations called that? You're right, Paimon didn't think of that. 
So the adventure team, Al, Petit Cho, Colonel Kate, Jack, Mori, the two of us, and our adventures? They were all just characters in the story? No, that can't be. Paimon can't accept that. Didn't we encounter all kinds of stuff after going through the portal in the tower? There's a lot of stuff there that wouldn't fit if this was just a story. It's a story made manifest. Uh, you know, like how there was no Holy Blade mentioned at the start, and how a sealed tower still had monsters and bubble formations inside it? Paimon... I can understand what Twitker is trying to say. So all the things that happened after we ascended the tower are things outside the realm of the story, is that right? More accurately, those parts of the story have not been written yet. So the Holy Blade, Narcius, they were still inside the story. It's just that they had not been arranged correctly yet. And Pima still finds it hard to imagine anyone would create such a huge building just for a story. I believe the structure already existed. It was just used as the setting for the story. So that means that the things I record along the way were things that happened here before. I'm just a character in a story. You're not merely a story. The fact that you can think about this means that you can remember it. But if that's the case, who is Anne? I am Anne. I must rescue Princess Lyris. All right, Twitka Paimon and dearest Anne, our time is up. I enjoyed our time together, but I'm afraid it is time for you to leave. Why did you have to say it was fiction? If you already knew, spare a thought for Anne's feelings at least. Hmm? No. Oh. Your vision blurs and you suddenly feel weightless, as the temperature of the once warm air plunges rapidly. What? What happened? But... Shush. There's no need to say anything, Anne. I once heard my best friend tell a story about a beautiful princess trapped in a high tower. Before you arrived, I had a dream. I dreamed that I was a small, brave Oceanid, and we set out to save the princess. And perhaps there was a princess in this world, and dragons too. But I also know that the world's affairs are rarely this simple. Why would a dragon be concerned with a princess after all? After waking up, I would find this dream laughable, yet nostalgic every time I thought about it. Do you remember now, Anne? No. There has to be some other way. If I can't save Princess Lilis, then what of my birth? My only wish? Do they have no meaning? Don't say that, Anne. Your birth was a beautiful accident. As things stand, I can only wish for you to live on for your own sake. Go see the world and see how it has changed these past years. I wish for you to have your own soul, memories, personality, and wishes. I wish for you to be the master of your own fate, and to experience all the beauty of the real world. Can you do that for me? It was a pleasure to meet you, Twitker. Paimon, it was my pleasure to meet you too, Anne. Eh? But the Anaposis is our tomb. Do not wish for you to linger here. Marianne, why are you saying that? We can find a way to help you, can't we? <laughs> I sense that you are good-hearted and powerful indeed. Thank you, Paimon. Twitka. I'm just someone who sometimes enjoys dreaming of lovely adventures and wonderful futures. But I know what happened in the past. I already know there's no going back. In the real world, everything has already ended. So this is farewell. Oh, hello. Was the memory of Marianne and her story that brought about Anne. Go with the flow. That's generally what we've been telling Paimon quite a bit. It's like, just go with it. Just go with the flow. Just go with the flow. And where we fought the dragon. How do, how do we get out of here? Through, through this hole? The hole. And back up we go. I thought we were going to stop there somehow. Bloop. Anne. I'm sorry, Night Twitker. Paimon. I'd already started to feel that some things were off earlier in the adventure. As you led me off the story's track, I started to understand and recall some things. 
but I still want to rescue Princess Lyris. That's the reason for which I was born. I want to save her and bring the story to a happy end. And I don't even know who she is. I only know that she is a gentle, lovely princess trapped due to Narcissus' invasion. Don't worry, Anne. At least... At least we had fun while travelling with the adventure team, right? I'm Twitka. Did you know that things would turn out this way? No. I thought we could help Anne, yeah. Like, things started to just get really strange and thought maybe that Anne was essentially what Marianne is. Like, they were one in the same. Oh. Well, if that's the case, we can still help Anne. Huh? Pama didn't understand anything Marianne said there at the end. Did you, Anne? I did, sort of. I could sense that she was speaking of something terrible that happened in the past. Well, Pama feels that that's unfair, not just to you, Anne, but to us, too. That's why we've got to find out what happened, at least. If we do, we can come up with some sort of plan. I wonder if this connects to Seymour now. Whether it be saving the princess or figuring out what Marianne said, or whatever. We just want to help you, Anne. Isn't that right, Whitaker? The story isn't over, Anne. We'll find a way. Okay. Still, if this is all just a story, and there's one thing Pyman doesn't get, what role do we play, Twitka? I can't be sure, but I think we're most likely... Undefined factors. Ugh. And that's why we can bring this story to an end. Now, Pyman gets it. That's why Anne found us and brought us into the story. Might not have thought about it, Anne, but since we've been able to knock this story off course, that means that we've opened all sorts of unknown possibilities. Isn't that right, Twitka? You could say that. Thank you, Knight Twitka. Thank you, Paimon. That's why we also need your help, Anne. And since we need to continue our adventure, well, can you think of anything that could help us figure out what to do next? Go see Seymour? Mm, let me think. My memories contain a place known... As the Narzissen Cruz Ordo, place appears to have very deep connections to past events, does it now? Hmm, now Pyman just realised this name has something to do with the kingdom and adventure team in Anne's story. Gasp! Shock! So that's it! Do you know of the Ordo? Yep, and we also met some people who are really connected to it. They might be able to help us. In any case, let's go!